Let me let me first talk about. Uh, I was not able to go to China. Steve, where are you? You know, and this past week, by the way, as a quick aside, uh, this is the the fifth time I've been the fifth day out of eight that I've actually been in St. Louis, and uh, we have a. It's, this is a large state. Did you know that? Uh, this is this is. Um, but. The St. Louis area, very important, and so, and especially the time I was pleased to be here, and Dr. George, you did a great job of narrating the video when the Chinese ambassador was here, and, and certainly I, I wholeheartedly applaud what's been happening uh, as far as trying to build this, this network, this relationship uh, with, uh, with China. Uh, the old, if you watch MASH reruns, where is he going with this, you're asking? <laughs> and the signpost that was in the middle of the camp, and it said, uh, you know, 34 miles to Seoul, and uh, in fact, I think I've actually, Wikipedia gave me this. Uh, Burbank, 5,011 miles, Toledo, 6,153 miles. If you look at, if, if there was such a signpost right where we're standing here in the St. Louis, it'd be kind of boring, uh, because uh, St. Louis is the same distance away from almost everywhere. Uh, it's about 250 to 300 miles away from Chicago, from Kansas City, from Indianapolis, from Louisville, from Memphis. In fact, as you probably know, about a third of the total population of this country, 100 million Americans, live within 500 miles of where we are seated today. And so the opportunities here uh, are many. And this is just this idea of working with the, the, the Chinese uh, to uh, have that hub opened. Uh, I think is an extraordinary uh, opportunity. Uh, let's talk about some of the things that, that are going on in, in the halls of uh, in Jefferson City. Uh, Bombardier, uh, I support. Now, maybe some here in the room would say, you know, but this is for a rifle shot for Kansas City. What I would say, the reason I'm excited about this very aggressive economic incentive is that I think this might be the blueprint for additional types of aggressive uh, incentives in the future. Uh, the fact that uh, you know, this unique way of, of having royalties and, and the tax credits being paid off or paid back, uh, as certain benchmarks are made as far as employment is, uh, is realized, as far as jobs are being added, I think is a unique opportunity. In fact, I'll share with you a conversation I had uh, yesterday afternoon with a colleague of mine from uh, the state of Kansas. He has reached out to Bombardier because he is uh, very much involved in the aerospace industry and uh, was frustrated, my colleague from Kansas, frustrated because we had been so aggressive here in the state of Missouri of reaching out to Bom Bombardier. Uh, and so that's a good thing to have Kansas frustrated with us uh, <laughs> because they certainly have, at least on the athletic fields, have made us frustrated uh, sometimes. Uh, but again, I think this is a, an opportunity and maybe something that we can build on in the future of having these very aggressive but uh, specific economic incentives. A Missouri Quality Jobs Act that many of you, a couple of you asked about. It's not just about bringing new jobs here, I mean that's part of it, but it's also about uh, rewarding Missouri businesses that have already proven themselves to be successful. And so if you are a business leader, you are employing more Missourians, uh, you deserve the state support. Uh, you're helping balance our state books, you're adding jobs, you're expanding the tax base, uh, and so thankfully there's so many of you and your colleagues across the state that the $40 million cap on this program is becoming a problem, and that quite frankly is a good problem to have. Uh, it means the program is a success, I want to build on this success, I support raising that cap from $40 million. On the Gromi State Initiative, I think, the, uh, I think most of the credit uh, goes to uh, Dr., uh, Dr. Perry. Uh, uh, from, uh, from the business school uh, and again the idea is that if you are an innovator, an inventor here in the state of Missouri and you come up with a brilliant idea, that in and of itself and you seek a patent, the only jobs created there are for the patent clerks and the patent lawyers. If you have though the ability through this angel investment and these tax incentives to actually help these high-tech startup companies. Uh, and some of those are even happening right here in St. Louis. I uh, visited uh, an incubator last week uh, of how these are real investments and are reaping real benefits uh, in, the, in the, the amount of jobs that are going to be created here. It's a, it's a specific type of focus, 
And so that's why I think, again, I support the idea of these angel tax incentives. Uh, no, $5 million, I think, is right now what they're, what they're discussing, uh, and I would support that. Life Sciences Trust Fund, a couple of you asked me about that. You know, what, what, unfortunately what has happened, I think, in the Life Sciences Trust Fund, a Life Sciences discussion, is we've, we've gotten involved uh, in, a, in a moral discussion. The fact is that the Life Sciences Trust Fund, what's happening at the Danforth Center in the area of plant science, for instance, has nothing to do with controversial types of research. What's happening for those of you that may be across the river in Illinois with the uh, National Corn Center in Illinois has really nothing to do with those tough social discussions that we're having. And, and ideally, again, the, the uh, payout through uh, the, uh, the smoking uh, the tobacco settlement, thank you, Bill, uh, he was mouthing the words, tobacco settlement. Uh, from the tobacco settlement, the ideas were that those monies were going to be used for this type of investment. Uh, and yet, we, we've not, for the Life Sciences Trust Fund, and we have not seen that yet. And so I wholeheartedly support what's been happening as far as life sciences. Uh, the, the fact is that uh, we cannot turn back. There have been 15,000 jobs that have been created uh, in the area of, of in the in the bio belt, as we're fond of saying, uh, and the technological edge here is so sharp that if we falter even one iota, it means we fall behind. And so those investments have to be focused and continued. Uh, and I think you know the thing is when you use the tobacco settlement to balance the budget, well, it balances the budget. And yet when you use those funds for an investment. Uh, those will continue to pay off and reap dividends uh, well down the line. There are a lot of other areas that, that we could talk about as far as health care, uh, ideas on employment at will. One of you asked about the second injury fund. Let me maybe leave that for your questions. Let me talk about one other item, however, uh, and that is as far as transportation and infrastructure is concerned. I call it the four R's. Let's see if I get them. Roads, rails, runways, and rivers. Uh, we have to focus on our transportation challenges in a multimodal way. Now, uh, locks and dams. I see Chris Brescia here, and, and that was a former life for Chris. Uh, finally, uh, and, and there, first of all, there's, there's a federal component to this, and of course then there's the state piece as well. And navigable waterways, and especially as you head north on the Mississippi River, uh, locks and dams, which were built in the 30s with a 50-year useful life, have out year, uh, lived their usefulness. In fact, uh, just up the river, there's a picture at the, uh, the Alton Lock of a steamboat being locked through the old lock. Now, that one is a 1,200-foot lock. We need to make those types of infrastructure improvements all the way up the river, and the Water Resources Development Act uh, will help do that. And what an interesting success story there, because it had been just river interests, barge owners, and, for instance, agricultural interest. Uh, then we were able to, to include at the table mainstream environmental groups who saw investment in the habitat was important, uh, and then we had uh, some of the labor groups. You know, 48 million man hours are going to be created. Uh, I asked uh, you know, a friend of mine from the Carpenters Union, can you put that into context? 48 million man hours, hours. what does that mean? And he said, well, it means two guys are going to be spending 24 million man hours apiece. Uh, uh, and so, so at least that aspect of it, we are on our way to making progress. And